Good evening folks, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. Tonight we are going to have a look at the second of our thermodynamics videos in which, exciting episode, I'm going to have a look at some, just exclusively, uh, some examples of the sorts of things they might ask you. We'll start, I think, here with the 2019 paper. By the way, I actually haven't cheated and I don't know what the answers are to these, so if I'm a little bit slow on the uptake, give me a break. Um, let's have a read through this. Following graph shows the variation in delta G with temperature for a reaction. Um, so delta G, remember, indicates the feasibility of a reaction. When delta G is positive, the reaction is not feasible. It can happen, but it won't happen by itself. When delta G is negative, then at that point there, the reaction will happen by itself. Um, and we can see it changes over at that point on the Kelvin scale, which looks to my eyes about 300 Kelvin. Let's have a look at the statements. The reaction is never feasible. Well, that's rubbish because this entire portion here is all negative. Always feasible. Equally rubbish because this is positive. Feasible above 300 Kelvin. Feasible below 300 Kelvin. Um, well, obviously, this stretch here is above 300 Kelvin. So that's C. Uh, I'm on slight zoom here, so bear with me as I sh shiggle around, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Iron 3 oxide can be reduced to iron. I've just realised I'm going to need the data book for this and I haven't printed it. I'll pause the video, that's no problem. Iron 3 oxide can be reduced to iron, yeah, here's the reaction here. Okay, fine. They give you some substances, they give you the delta H's, uh, delta HF's, enthalpy of formations, and they're asking for the enthalpy change in this reaction. So this is the one where you have the sum of the delta HF's of all the products. Take away the sum of the delta HF, I thought that through really badly, of all the reactants. Um, I may mean to date book for that. And I, no, I think we're okay. We're okay for this. The thing to remember here is the multipliers. It's so easy to get this all uh, crystal clear in your head and then forget multipliers. So let's not do that. I may pause this while I actually write out the boring stuff for you though. So here's our products. Um, we've got two lots of hydrogen, which is zero. We've got three lots of water, which is three lots of negative 242. Take away the sum of one lot of Fe2O3, which is minus 822, and three lots of hydrogen, which is zero. So let's choose to the calculation on that. And according to my calculator, the answer is positive 96. So that would give us C for that one. So yeah, this is the enthalpy change of the overall overall reaction is just the sum of all the products, enthalpy formations, take away the sum of all the reactants, enthalpy formation. That was in our um, data book formula page. <coughs> Do we have any more? Oh, there we go. Uh, some more on this one here. Are we on shot? I think so. Um, which line in the table is correct for water condensing? So that's turning from a gas back to a liquid. Uh, that's sneaky here because as soon as you see water in a change of state, you tend to think uh, of it either melting or evaporating, but we're actually going the other way around here. So if you're condensing straight away, the entropy becomes lower because gas entropies are always much higher. So the change in entropy for this will be negative. It will be a drop, which means we can throw these two out. Uh, and then the delta H for water condensing. Well, if you want to boil water, you've got to put the energy in which means, slightly counterintuitively, as gas conden as water condenses back into liquid, it dumps a load of energy out. That, by the way, is one of the reasons why steam burns you so badly. Not only is it a high temperature, but it's also dumping uh, loads of energy back down onto your skin. Don't let that happen to you. So the delta H for that is negative. So the answer is, in fact, B for that one. Um, these are kinetics questions. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, I'm sure we had a... Oh yeah, this one here is the part of the SQA's tricks and traps on definitions. Uh, we're looking for enthalpy of formation. Now there was a variety of tripwires in that definition here, guys. I'm trying to straighten my, my paper up, sorry. Um, and the, it cannot, so great. It's one of these ones where you should check all your answers in case you miss this cannot. Just as a little exam technique, guys, don't always stop at the one you think is right. Well, you can do that if you fancy the first time around, but make sure you go back and know why the other ones are wrong. Because if you were to miss that, and it's so easy to blank that out in moments of stress, then you will jump on the first correct answer, which is wrong, of course. 
Um, but if you go back and check it, you'll find, wait a minute, there's multiple ones that are correct. And this is where it would force you to go back. And now hopefully you'll see the cannot. Just a little bit of exam technique there. Definition, you're making one mole of the product. That doesn't help us. They're all one mole of the product. You have to make it from its elements. They're all elements. And the elements have to be in their normal states at room temperatures. Silicon solid, chlorine gas, magnesium solid, oxygen gas. Ah, well, they're all looking good so far. Uh, except, of course, if you have a look at the chlorine, chlorine is not monatomic. Chlorine is diatomic, so that is the incorrect one. Any more? Yeah, there's another one on this side. Are we still on camera? Oh, I forgot to check. I was on camera on the last one. I do apologise. Uh, which of the following is likely to have the low... Oh, this is a favourite sort of trick question uh, that stumps people. I love it. I managed to catch this one. That's why I printed this one out. How the heck are you supposed to know? <laughs> the lowest standard... They always go with lowest or highest? Now, this is to do with physical state because in my previous video, uh, which I hope you've watched. If you haven't watched it, I'll stick the, uh, the thing up here. Uh... If you haven't watched my previous video, I said that entropy changes with temperature. That's true, it rises with temperature, but also it jumps up massively when you change physical states. So if you want the lowest standard entropy, you're looking for the one that's either solid or liquid, and the others are not. Now, at 100 Celsius, we can instantly chuck out neon, because it's a gas. Mercury is a liquid at 100 Sulfur, I think it's, I'll have to go and check sulfur and phosphorus. I'm not completely okay with their melting points. Let me go and just check that out. Right, he says, looking at off camera at my data book, it says, so phosphorus has a melting point of 44. So at 100, that will be a liquid. Mercury, as I said, will be a liquid. I'm guessing sulfur, of course, is a solid. Let me just double as 100 and something, isn't it? Yeah, 115 for sulfur. So that is a solid. And these two are liquids, and that is a gas. So that's why it's your lowest entropy. Uh, nearly done. Let's have a look at a classic calculation here, folks. Uh, let me stay zoomed in there, and I'll just try and move the page up and down as we need. This is your classic one where they ask you to calculate a temperature where a reaction just becomes feasible. Why is this so squinty? I'm so sorry. Terrible video production today. You need to get a better YouTuber. Amateur hour here. So what's going on? Here's the reaction here. We're making ethanol. Um, and what is going on? We've got delta G of some chemicals involved. So it's ethene plus water. It's hydration of ethene. Which reminds me, I must make some organic videos. Um, but that's me going slightly off target, sorry. Delta G, delta H uh, for the different compounds. For the hydration of ethene. Use the data in the table to calculate the standard enthalpy change. One mark here, so it should be relatively straightforward. That's simply the sum of all the enthalpy of formations of the products. Take away the reactants. So I'll pause and write that out. So we've got our ethanol enthalpy of formation. Take away the sum of these two here, which is 52 and negative 286. Let me bring in my ancient calculator, circa 1994 which is older than most of the staff at Melbourne. Um, we got 278. Take away 52 and 286. Which gives you negative 44. A little word on units. In most chemistry papers, it does, if the unit is in the question, don't put any units here. Don't try and be smart. Just leave the bare number. Because if you do put units in and you get them ever so slightly wrong, even like that index there is wrong, they'll take the marks off you. Although they can only do that once per paper, but still, marks are hard enough to get. Let's not burn them, shall we? Standard entropy change. Uh, delta S. Now that's joules per Kelvin per mole, not kilojoules. That's also a three marker. So how do we go about this? Well, we need to do some... I am going to struggle to fit it in here, but we'll give it a shot. We need to use the fact that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So we're basically solving for delta S here. 
which means that um, delta S equals, let's do some rearranging, um, delta H minus delta G all over T. We know uh, that because we just worked it out. We can work out delta G from the table using the similar approach here. That's delta G of the reactants minus the sum of the delta G of all the products. And then once we've got these two terms, we can divide them by T. Um, T apparently is not there though. They haven't given you the T. This is why I printed this one. I was wrong, by the way. Uh, so we need... Um, Oh, no, I wasn't wrong at all, because they do ask you to calculate the temperature. This is why I love this question. It's really sneaky, because it seems to contradict itself, but it really doesn't, because the little circle there, like I said in my initial video, means standard conditions. So we do actually know T, it's 298 Kelvin. So I'm just going to pause while I work out this delta G term here. So according to me, delta G comes out to be negative 6 kilojoules per mole. Um which means we now know all of these terms here. So we can calculate this delta S. It will be negative 44, um, take away negative 6, all over 298 Kelvin. Let's work that one out. So my calculator says this comes out to be, I'm just going to do this down here because we're running out of time. Run out of space, sorry. Am I still on camera? Oh, nearly made the classic error there. There we go. Um, so this comes out to be negative 0. Point. How many significant figures were in this question? Three significant figures. So I, I'm going to keep the answer in my calculator to all the significant figures, but I'm just going to write it down to three. So negative 0. 0.128, in fact. But we're not done, because that is kilojoules per mole per Kelvin, because these numbers were all in kilojoules per mole. And of course, we wanted the answer in joules. So let's multiply that by 1,000, which gives us negative 128. Uh, do you need the... Nope, you don't need the units. So that's our final answer for this one here. Lastly, let's pick a different colour, because we are being asked to calculate the temperature at which the reaction just becomes feasible. Let's do this in black. Now, um, the story with this just becomes feasible is when delta G just becomes zero. So we're going to reuse this equation here, only delta G is now equivalent to nothing. And we're once again, we're solving for T. So that means T delta S equals delta H, which means T is delta H over delta S. Two marks. Surprised they're giving you two marks for that. Would have thought it was just one. Let's just check. Um, so delta H, uh, we found to be negative 44. Delta S in kilojoules, you know, the same unit as this, is, ne oh, that's maybe what the, the extra mark is for. Negative 0 0.128. Uh, so let's do that. So that's five. By the way, quick sanity check. So far, is the temperature, because they're both negative, that means your temperature is going to be positive. That's a big plus. <laughs> if you're doing these calculations, you get a negative Kelvin. You have done it wrong. Um, so 44 uh, over 0.0128. Another quick sanity check is good. It's going to be more than 44 Kelvin. It's going to be a decent number. It numbers in like the 1 or 2 or 10 Kelvin. I don't think that would be right either for most chemical reactions, to say the least. Uh, we're getting 344 Kelvin. That's the temperature at which it just... You don't even need Kelvin. Sorry, I'm not obeying my own advice, silly old fool. It says Kelvin there. Don't put a unit in the answer. Just stick with the numbers. That's us done. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.